Have you ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix? If so, consider sending it my way. With all the stuff going on with Reddit, your submissions are more valuable now than they ever have been, so just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. Hey everyone, I've never really wanted to share this story with the internet. Mostly because I know that it sounds incredibly bizarre, and I know that a lot of people won't believe it. But with the seemingly increasing prevalence of Glitch in the Matrix stories, and stories of alternate timelines, I thought maybe I could put it here and people would accept it. I'm 17 now, but... The experiences that I'm talking about here all started back whenever I was around 10, and they've caused me a lot of distress throughout a large portion of my life. And it's really made me think about the thin wall that blocks one existence from another. So here's my story. Ever since I was a very little girl, I've always had these super vivid dreams sometimes disturbingly vivid. They're like a kaleidoscope of emotions and senses, experiences that feel incredibly tangible, incredibly real. I've dreamt of various things like alternate lives, different places, interacting with people I've never met, and, remarkably, some of these dreams have had effects on real things in life very real effects that don't make much sense to me. For instance, when I was around 10, I dreamt of playing a melody at a concert on a grand piano, my fingers hitting every key effortlessly. In this dream, I played this song like I had been playing it for ages. I think it was a song that I'd actually written. When I woke up, I felt compelled to go to my brother's room and play his Casio keyboard that he had. He wasn't home at the time, he was with his dad, so I went into his room, turned on the keyboard, and I started playing. I played this song from the first note to the last. I played this absolutely gorgeous melody on the piano without even thinking about it. I've had zero training or practice. I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb, and that's about it. And yet, I played this absolutely beautiful melody. Worse yet, after I played it the first time, I sat there thinking with this huge grin that I was some sort of musical savant. And then I tried to play it a second time, and I couldn't. I couldn't figure out which keys to hit. I couldn't move my fingers fast enough and I couldn't remember the tempo or the tune. One morning, I woke up with an eerie sense of deja vu. The room, the people, the things I did at school that day, all of it felt incredibly familiar. After a while, it hit me. I was living through one of these dreams. I was literally going through the motions that I'd had in one of these vivid dreams that I frequently experience. But... What's weird to me is that, after that, things kind of started feeling like they were bleeding from these dreams into my real life. I once had a dream where I made a painting in my high school art class that won second prize, in an art competition for the school. I'm certain that this was just a dream and not real life, but yet, I have a painting affixed with a silver-colored ribbon. I suck at painting. I cannot for the life of me paint like that painting, but it exists now. I had a dream that my mother and I once built a flower bed in the backyard with a birdhouse that my father constructed. It was an intricate birdhouse that took him a long time to make. And now, when I look out back, I can see the flower bed. The problem is that my mother and I never did that. My dad doesn't live with us and hasn't since I was a child, and he certainly is not good with carpentry. I had another dream where my dad and I visited my aunt's grave, my aunt that I loved dearly. 
one that I remember spending Christmas with every year. When I had this dream, she was alive, and now, she's gone. I don't mean that she's died since that dream. I mean that, from what I've been told, she died three years before I was born, in a car accident. I remember spending time with this woman, who died before I was even born. I have several more, but I think that you all get the picture, and I don't want to go on and on. This has all led me to really feel like reality is malleable, something that we can change into various shapes. I'm not saying that I'm the one shaping my reality, because I'm not. I'm just seeing things that aren't real, and then they seem to become real. I'm not manifesting them, but they are manifesting. Again, I know that this all sounds really crazy, and I don't want to believe that I'm going absolutely bonkers at the age of 17. I feel like I'm stuck in this weird spiral of uncertainty, where I'm not sure if I'm just misremembering things, or imagining things that weren't real, and thinking they are. Or, maybe, those weird days where things happened are the dreams, and this is real life. See what I mean? It's a weird cyclical struggle for me where I don't know what's what. The only thing is that I'll say that it has been a long time since I've had any of these dreams where things seem to change in my life. So maybe it's over. Maybe it was a passing thing for me and it only took half of my life to get through it. Or maybe the next one will be even crazier. I don't have any clear answers and Maybe I never will, but through it all, I've come to have a lot of questions about our reality, and my own existence. Hello, Raven. I've only recently discovered your channel via your podcast on Spotify, and I've been really enjoying the glitch stories. They make my nighttime walks for exercise a lot easier and enjoyably spooky. I do believe that this is a real phenomenon, but I'm skeptical as to whether or not it's connected to the idea of a matrix or simulation. I suspect that there are just aspects to the nature of reality that we don't, and likely never will, understand. But nobody came here to listen to me ramble. I have a handful of odd experiences that could fit in with this glitch phenomenon. None of these are earth-shattering, but they are odd enough that if you're paying attention for such things, you would notice. I've wondered if looking for glitches plays a part in experiencing them. Anyways. Story 1. I tend to sleep very poorly, and often only sleep two or three hours at the most. So that means that a lot of nights are awake doing something other than sleeping. A couple of years ago, I got into the habit of going out late at night to get something to eat and find a quiet place to sit and listen to scary stories, or to read. So that's what I was doing on this particular night. It was about 3 in the morning, and I was on my way back home and, ironically enough, I'd been listening to Glitch in the Matrix stories on YouTube. I live in a small town, and I rarely encounter another person when I'm out late at night, and the roads are always empty. So I was on the highway and there wasn't another car anywhere near me. Suddenly, a bright yellow sports car comes roaring up behind me out of nowhere. I've never seen this car, and it was very conspicuous. Bright yellow green stripes down the side, and it was just suddenly there behind me. The car pulls around me, and as it's passing me, I see the custom license plate. It just says, Glitch. I sat there with my mouth open and watched it drive into the distance. I haven't seen it since. Story 2. We have two dogs and a cat, and all three of them get fed early in the morning at the same time. 
each one of them has their own dish that is their specific place that no one else uses. So, one day, Zooey's plate goes missing. We can't find it anywhere. It's not in the dishwasher, not hidden under or behind anything, it's just gone. Now, Zooey is a six-pound papillion, and this is a heavy glass plate, so she did not carry it off somewhere. We looked for this thing everywhere and could not find it. So, we ended up just getting Zooey a new plate for her food. A couple of days later, that one goes missing too. Same thing. No idea where it could possibly be. So, we got Zooey a third plate. This one did not go missing, fortunately. However, a couple of weeks down the road, I was getting dishes out of the cabinet for dinner, and there was Zooey's first plate. Now, I get dishes from there every day, and I put dishes there every day. It had not been in that spot earlier that day, and I would not have missed it. Her plate also never gets put up there, even after it's been washed. It stays on the floor. I have no idea how it got up there, and the second one never turned up again, and I have no idea where it went. Story 3 A couple of years ago, my mom came home from the grocery store a few days after Christmas with something that she had purchased on sale. Four tins of Christmas cookies. And there were four different colors. Blue, green, red, and yellow each with gold striping. There was one for each of us, and I picked the red one, as red and gold are my colors of the university I go to. I picked up the tin, and I carried it back to my chair and sat it down next to me. Then I sat down, and I picked it up to open it and to sample the cookies, but found that I was holding the yellow tin. I looked across the room, and sure enough, the red tin was still on the table. I stared at it with wide eyes and an opened mouth. I had 100% picked up the red tin. The yellow tin hadn't even been next to it. There's no way that I could have made that mistake. I put the yellow one back and got the red one, but I felt really odd about it. They weren't even remotely similar in color. And thank you again for reading my stories, and I hope you have a great day. Again, not earth-shattering or life-changing, but that seems to be the case with these kind of things. As with many others, I've always been a lurker when it comes to Glitch in the Matrix stories. I have enjoyed reading and hearing them, thinking they were just these weird little occurrences that people go through. I look at it as a strange little rabbit hole that you can get lost in, but I never thought that I would have a glitch to share, yet here I am. This left me honestly dumbfounded and confused, but maybe someone can offer up an explanation for what it is that happened. This actually happened a couple of weeks ago. It was a Friday night, and I was about to have a fun weekend with one of my girlfriends. We were both off the following week, so, admittedly, we were going to overdo it. We were staying home, though, so it wasn't like we were going to be a problem, just really messed up and sitting in my living room. My girlfriend, Sammy, came over and she asked me if I'd gotten her peach schnapps. I'd completely forgotten to get them, and she'd forgotten to remind me, so before we started, we made a trip to the liquor store. We got there, got the bottle, the last one on the shelf, mind you, went to the counter and had small talk with the cashier. I paid for it. We walked out and got right back on the road. It's not a long trip, only about 10 minutes, and about halfway back, Sammy opened the bag to look at the schnapps, and it wasn't peach? I glanced over and she made a comment about how we grabbed the wrong thing. The thing is, that's not possible. We grabbed the last peach schnapps on the shelf, 
which is a slightly peach-tinged clear color. The bottle she was holding was sour apple flavored, which was a very bright green. Not to mention, I don't even like apples, and I wouldn't have accidentally grabbed it. I asked Sammy if she wanted to head back to the store and get the peach schnapps, and she said that it was fine, and that maybe she would like what we grabbed. I told her that we could go back if she wanted, but she again said no that it was fine. I said okay, and we continued heading home. That, however, is only half of the glitch. The bottle changing to something else. It actually got even more strange. When we got back to my house, I walked into the kitchen and there was a bottle of her peach schnapps sitting on the counter. She made a comment about how I told her I didn't have any, and I said that I didn't, and that I had no idea where that bottle had come from. I don't keep a ton of liquor in my house because I'm not a super heavy drinker, unless it's an event like this. So I only had one or two bottles in my house, so it wasn't like this could have just been missed or looked over. It was sitting on the counter right up front. Weirder still, this bottle was sealed. The plastic ring around the cap hadn't been broken yet, so it was brand new. Sammy laughed it off and told me I was losing it, but I'm seriously confused. I didn't have any of this in my house prior, yet there it was. I know that we grabbed what we meant to grab at the store, yet it seemingly changed halfway home. How was any of this possible beyond me, as she said, losing my mind? I'm pretty sure my brain is still stable, so I'm just accepting that this was a really weird thing that occurred. I can't make heads or tails of it. It was creepy, it was weird, and it left me in a weird bit of, uh, what? I was door dashing today, June 5th, 2023, around 4 p.m. I had a list of items a customer wanted me to get for them from the Dollar General store. It was around 40 items. As I was shopping, I stumbled across this separate shopper's cart. It had like 10 items that I needed on my shopping list in it. Some of the items I had already picked, but there were several others I needed and got them out of this separate shopping cart. It also had this one item that was out of stock temporarily inside this shopping cart. It was some kind of makeup called Sea Queen. Other items that I needed or I had already picked up that were inside the cart, like miniature Tootsie Rolls, body mist that I had overlooked on my shopping list, Dawn soap, etc. They were the exact same brands as my list. I wasn't sure of what to make of it at first, and I wondered if another dasher may have come in and got the items, but then rejected the order and passed it on to me. I asked the cashier if he had seen another dasher in here earlier, and he said he had seen no other dasher that whole day. I took the items to the customer, and I asked her if someone else beside me had been scheduled to bring her dash earlier, instead of me. She said no, that I was the only name she had to pick up her items from the Dollar General. I started to ask myself, am I experiencing a glitch in the Matrix? To be sure, I ended up calling the DoorDash main phone number, to ask if another dasher had been on the list to take that specific door dash. He said I was the only person that was on the list to take that dash. I'm not sure what to make of this, but I'm completely dumbfounded. Was this a glitch or something paranormal? It seems more like a glitch in the Matrix to me, and if you have any logical explanation, please feel free to share. Thank you. In spring of 2022, my partner and I found ourselves packing up our apartment to move into a new place. 
I found out I was pregnant, so we decided that we needed more room. So we worked with the rental office to move to a new unit on the property without causing lease problems. I want to say that the apartment that we lived in was a bit odd. Not like haunted, but it seemed like it was the place for weird things to happen for us. Small glitches here and there, but nothing really worth talking about. With only one exception. The one that this story is about. We were mostly packed and ready to move to the new location, but we're still having to sleep at the old place until the property told us that we could make the move. One night, I was jerked out of a deep sleep by what sounded like music coming from the kitchen. Our apartment was pretty small. It was just the kitchen, living room, bedroom, and bathroom all pretty well crammed into a small cube. I sat up and looked over at my clock, and it was 3.30 a.m. Confused and annoyed, I got up to try and figure out where the hell the music was coming from when it clicked in my head that the song was Believer by Imagine Dragons. This may not seem too weird, it's a fairly popular song, but... For me, it was really strange. This song was a song that I used as an alarm on my prior phone, and the alarm was always set for 3.30pm. So, to have it going off somewhere in my apartment at 3.30 in the morning was incredibly strange. Now, again, you could say that maybe it was just my alarm going off on the phone, but that phone was in the end table of our bedroom and it had been dead for a solid year and a half since the day that I got my newer phone. I walked into the kitchen, and I for sure heard the song playing, albeit muffled. I stood there, trying to pinpoint the direction from where this music was coming from. It was close enough that it was in the room. There was no way that it was coming from another apartment connected to ours, and just coming through the walls. I stepped toward the cabinet to listen, and after a bit of deduction, I was able to determine that the sound was coming from the cabinet above the fridge. I grabbed the stepladder from the hall closet, pulled it into the kitchen, and set it up in front of the fridge to get into that cabinet, and to see what was playing that song. I reached for the cabinet and pulled the door open, and the second that I pulled the door open, the music just stopped. The cabinets were completely empty, as we had already packed up the kitchen, so there was nothing even in there that could have played the music. I want to also mention that, in the time that it took for all this to play out, this song had looped through at least once, and almost all the way through a second time. So this wasn't just someone playing the song. It was definitely something like an alarm on a phone going off. I shut the cabinet, half expecting the music to play again, but it didn't. After this, I went back to the bedroom, opened the nightstand to see if maybe the phone had gone off somehow, but I pushed the power button and it was so dead that I couldn't even get the battery dead screen. I plugged it in for a moment, and it definitely said 0% as it started charging. I tossed it back in the drawer and went back to sleep, and that was that. I know that this wasn't a super crazy glitch, but it was so weird to me, and I can't explain it. I'm certain that it wasn't from the apartment above us. The room that shares the wall with our kitchen is our restroom so it's not like it was coming from another unit in that direction. On top of that, the fact that it stopped the second that I would have found the source, that's the one thing that actually scares me. It was like I wasn't allowed to see it. Like this was some sort of glitch that I wasn't allowed to solve. So, we didn't. I left it alone. I never got answers, and we moved out of that apartment within the next couple of days. That's my glitch. 
I hope that you enjoyed it, and if anyone can explain, well, I guess I'll just say, make me a believer. Hi, Raven. I recently submitted a couple of stories and wanted to add this one. This is by far the strangest one, and it's the only one that I have no possible explanation for. It's one of two things that I have experienced that I am almost certain are paranormal. Strangely, it didn't stick in my memory the same way that the other less bizarre occurrences did. I only remembered it randomly today. A couple of years ago, I found a strange piece of plastic on the kitchen counter. It was translucent and a dark green. It was heavy plastic with odd little sparkles inside of it, if that makes sense. In other words, it was very distinct. And for the life of me, I had no idea where it had come from. It was small, but again, distinctive. I just threw it away. A couple of days later, I was standing in the same spot at the kitchen counter, about to put a plastic bag clip on a bag of chips, when the clip suddenly snapped, just broke in half. I heard a small piece of plastic at the counter, but I couldn't find it to throw it away with the rest of the broken clip. Then it hit me. I looked down at the translucent dark green plastic of the clip, the little sparkles in the plastic. It was the exact same material. Exactly the same. The more I thought about it, the more dumbfounded I was. I'd been listening to glitch stories lately, and I stood there and thought, Holy crap, I just experienced a glitch. Glitch? Time travel? Some sort of hole in reality or displacement? I have no idea. But I have no good explanation for how that piece of plastic from the broken clip ended up on the counter days before it should have. Keep up the good work. I'm really enjoying the podcast, and it gets me through my late exercise walks. Hi, Raven. I love your videos. I've been listening for a couple of years now, and I'm glad that I finally have the chance to tell you that you've been a big help to my insomnia, and keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Now, on to the story. I grew up in the middle of nowhere in the state of New York. I specify state so that there's no confusion with New York City. There's only farmland nearby with very small towns. My graduating class had about 80 students, and my girlfriends had about 40. One summer, a couple of friends of mine, my girlfriend and I decided to stay at my girlfriend's childhood home to get away from our college apartment. We got bored, however, very quickly, and started looking for things that we could do. When my girlfriend mentioned that there's a famous haunted house not far from where she lived, it was about a 10 minute drive, so we decided that it would be fun to go and check it out. It was around 2 a.m. when we decided this, so keep that in mind when considering the following events. When we arrived at the house, there was a long gravel driveway, and before we could make it all the way up to the house, we were stopped by two state police officers. Not local police or county sheriffs, but state officers, which is unusual to say the least. I can't remember exactly how the interaction went, as I was sitting in the back seat and didn't catch everything that was said, but I remember that it wasn't your usual license and registration conversation. The police officers were giddy and acting unusual. They told us that there were camera crews shooting at the house and that we had to leave, but we could clearly see that there was no activity at the house from where we were. Anyways, we left, and on the way back, the driver had noticed that she couldn't find her registration anywhere. We all looked in the car while she drove, and nothing. The next morning, we tore the car apart looking, and nothing. Then, suddenly, 
two weeks later, we got pulled over again on our way to go camping. And there it was, right in her glove box. For lack of a better word, this was one of my more weird and memorable moments of my life, and I'll never forget the chills down my spine when I saw that piece of paper. First, I would like to tell you that I like the calmness in which you narrate mind-blowing stories while everyone around you is jaw-dropped, and I know your style. It's like I see myself sharing happenings with people that would let most of them with emotional scars, and I'm just being casual me. Like I'm talking about normal random things in my life that, for someone else, would either break their perception of reality or call it a hoax or a bedtime story. Well, as you guessed it, me being here means that I witnessed a lot of malfunctions and weird things happening in the Matrix. Paranormal stuff. Time dilation, minor teleportations, you name it. Honestly, most of the people that I talk to about the things that happened to me, or around me, seem intrigued, and I believe that only a small percentage can experience things like this. Or just everyone experiences them, but somehow they are erased from their memory. Maybe someday I'll start to write in a notebook about the weird stuff I still remember, and start to share them with you. But for now, I will tell you only this one that irked me a lot. When I was little, I came home from school and the front gate of my yard was locked, and I never had a key because my parents would rarely lock the gate since we had a big dog for protection. When this happened, I always jumped the fence, but this time after I climbed on top of the fence, I was preparing to make the jump on the ground when somehow I fell. To add some details, inside the garden we had another iron razor spiked fence. The spires looked like sharp lances, and somehow I fell with my knee exactly on them, and after I landed again in my knees on the floor. I felt like I fell on a hard object when my kneecap hit the sharp fence and after I fell again, dropping to my knees on the hard ground. I had a few bruises, and my knees hurt a little bit, but no cuts, or anything. To me, at that moment, and at that age, it seemed normal, and I was glad that everything was alright. After a period of time, it would come to me. How did I manage to escape such a tragedy? Because normally... The sharp lances would have penetrated my knees when falling upon them, and most likely from that angle, would have completely cut off my legs. I played this scenario a lot in my mind, and I tried to get a normal explanation for what happened. But every time, I get very anxious and afraid and try to think about something else. After all this time, I realized that I should be in a wheelchair but somehow I managed to slip that harsh reality to a better one. I just wonder, did I somehow change it? Or did the crippled me from the future somehow manage to tamper with the wheels of reality and time? My mother owns a blue and white tote bag. It's very sturdy, and she uses it to carry all of her medical files when she goes to any medical appointment. She lent it to me since I had to hand over all eight of my scholar books as I'm graduating high school. Since the bag is sturdy, it was able to carry all of my heavy books. I remember handing them over to a guy scanning them to make sure that I hadn't lost any of the books, putting the blue and white tote bag inside of my backpack and joining my friends. I recall this action very clearly. I go home in the evening and my mother asks me to give back the bag. It is nowhere to be found. I tell my mom that I remembered putting it inside of my backpack, but since I'm rather scatterbrained and often lose my stuff, 
I once even lost my ID. She brushes it off and asks me to find it the next day. I don't want to disappoint her, so the next day a friend of mine and I go in the room where I handed my books in, my usual classrooms, the yard, and we even ask the receptionist about their lost object section, and we don't find it. Quite defeated, I tell my mom that it is lost for real, that it must have slipped out of my backpack in the street or something, as it's nowhere to be found. This morning, as I went into the schoolyard, my jaw dropped at the sight of the tote bag right there, on a bench table. I was with the same friend, and we were both flabbergasted. How did this bag stay on the bench for three days without anyone taking it for themselves, or handing it in to the found object section? And most importantly, how on earth did my friend and I miss it while looking for it, when it was in such a visible spot? So that, my friends, was this week's glitch in the Matrix Collection. A collection of strange, weird, unexpected stories. Stories that make you feel kind of... odd. Just a collection of strange stories that seem to fit outside of our existence. Proof that our... simulation, if you will, is written in spaghetti code. Specifically, Pearl spaghetti code. Figure out how that works. If you know what Pearl is, you know that that's really not a thing that can happen, but... I mean, I guess it is, but whatever. Anyways, my point is weird stories, and thank you to everyone who submitted their stories to me and those who let me use their stories from other places. You guys are amazing. And of course, if you listened to this point, you're pretty damn amazing too. That's right, I said a naughty word. I hope that you're all having a beautiful day, though. I really do. Uh, pretty good Monday so far. It's early in the morning still. We're getting this done quick. Had it all recorded last night. Forgot to do this part, so we're doing it right now. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you would like, you can also join Patreon memberships for get early access and extra stuff. Extra stuff. The $10 Patreon group, um... If you join the $10 a month group for three months, I think is what I have it set to, uh, I send you a poster. And I sign the posters. Personally. I, I get them delivered here, I sign them, and I send them off. Now, I'm not going to say I'm the best at getting them out exactly on time, but I do I do my best. I try. So, If you are interested, consider that. I should really set up a, a poster thing so people can just buy posters. That'd be kind of cool. But, I don't know. Maybe someday. I'm not prioritizing that right now. You all just watching my videos is plenty of support, so. Um, you can also do another thing for me, if you feel so bold, and that is participate in what we call the Word of the Week. Now, the Word of the Week is where you give me... No, you don't give me a word. I give you a word. Word of the Week is where I give you a word. Well, technically, you guys gave me the word, and then I'm giving you back the word, because you all gave me a list of words to use. Word is no longer feeling like a word, so I'm going to stop saying it. No, I'm not, because I have to finish this. Um, I give you a word, you put the word in a sentence, I put your sentence on the screen. Easy as that, right? On the screen now, and probably several moments before now, is the collection of all the beautiful people who submitted their word of the week last week to me. Or their sentence utilizing the word of the week. They felt it would behoove them to use said word. All of these lovely folks went above and beyond to leave these comments. Never expected, always appreciated. And a huge thank you to every single one of them. Now this week, I was going through the list of words you guys sent to me to use. And let me tell you, I strained myself to find the, find the next one, to figure out what one I wanted to use next. And that's the word, strain. S-T-R-A-I-N. It has numerous definitions. Uh, lineage and ancestry. Inherited or inherent inherent character, quality or disposition to draw tight, cause to fit firmly or stretch to maximum, maximum, maximum extension or tautness, to exert to the utmost or to cause to pass through a strainer. So to strain, to push yourself too hard. Uh, a strain is also a lineage, like 
bacterial strains, or to cause to pass through a strainer, such as you're straining your pasta. A lot of possibilities, so don't strain yourself trying to come up with a sentence. Um, all that said, friends, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Like I said, I hope you have a great week. I hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, please remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you're the best you that you can be. Never let anyone tell you otherwise, and please don't forget it. And until next time, much love, and sleep well.